So um, my name is uh, Daniel Herzog from Spox.com. It's the German media partner of EuroLeague. And um, today we have uh, kind of a panel discussion with three absolute legends of the sport. Um, and um, yeah, you can sit in this in the stands here. So if you don't want to stand, you can, you can. Yeah, you can sit there. It's, it's fine. Yeah. So if everyone would sit there, please do it. So uh, now let me introduce uh, our legends. Please welcome with a warm applause, Joe Arlaukas, <laughs> European League champion with Real Madrid. Joe, hey, have a seat, yeah. Patrick Femerling, EuroLeague champion with Barcelona in 2003. And last but not least, Ibrahim Kutluay, <laughs> EuroLeague champion with Panathinaikos. Yeah, welcome. Pleasure to have you here. So, we only have one mic, so this is going to be a little bit. I give it to Joe because he talks a lot. <laughs> well, Joe, how do you feel today after this amazing semi-finals? Um, hello. First of all, uh, is it on? Is this on? Ah. Check, check, check. There you go. Now we're on. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here, and uh, it's an honor for me to be here with these guys. <clears throat> really, it's just uh, it's amazing to be able to sit down with um, these legends that have been playing this game for so many years, and uh, and be here to be able to talk to everybody. So thank you very much for having me, and thank you very much for leading the round table yeah. here. <laughs> Um, I feel good. I mean, the games were really good. The, the first game was a little bit slow. Um, it wasn't, I think, what anybody expected. I thought it was going to be a little bit more high scoring, and it wasn't. But um, the second game was very typical EuroLeague semifinal basketball. It was very intense defensively, offensively. Both teams played with a, a level of physicality and, and intensity that was really hard to match. And and I think for, uh, we'll talk about the final, I'm sure, a little bit later. Yes, but later, the, uh, later on. But, you know, the, the, the game was an amazing game to watch. Uh, the second game was just, uh, I mean, for a basketball lover, yeah. it was a perfect game to watch. Yeah. Patrick, what would you say about the atmosphere in the, in the arena yesterday? I think the atmosphere was great. Uh, the first game, obviously, with so many Fenerbahce fans in the gym uh, <laughs> was okay. But in the second game was amazing. And uh, I think it's... Uh, it's good for the for the uh, uh, for the excitement of the fans that Fenerbahce made it to the final. It's going to be obviously, as Joe said, we're going to talk about it later. But it's going to be going to be a very physical, very great game. And uh, but it's uh, it's exciting so far. Yeah, Ibrahim, uh, what do you think about Berlin as a host of the Euroleague Final Four so far? First of all, thank you very much. To uh, uh, I'm very happy to be here with uh, uh, all friends. Uh, to be together and it's nice to be in Berlin too because uh, there is so many Turkish uh, living in Berlin I feel like my hometown here yeah. and uh, we get, Berlin is a very nice city and uh, all day when we are walking around uh, so many friends and uh, so many Turkish people yeah. and it's a very nice atmosphere here I believe tomorrow will be full of Turkish people <laughs> I think because so, yeah. I know that so many Fenerbahce fans coming uh, today and tomorrow yeah. to see the final so this year the final four is a little bit unusual the competitors are a, bit, a little bit unusual because we don't have Olympiacos, we don't have Real Madrid, we don't have Barcelona what do you think, what does this tell you about the development of the league? Yeah. every one of you <laughs> Uh, the league is uh, developing and growing every year, and uh, you know, 15 years every day, every year we see something different, many differences. And uh, like Joe said before, uh, second game it was really, really uh, high intensity game and very nice Euroleague game. Both teams play high intensity, uh, defensively and offensively they play excellent and uh, the game go over time. So this year, Fenerbahce fans here, but before Maccabi, Panathinaikos, Olympiakos. So I believe next year will be more competitive because 16 great teams will be in the league. Mm -hmm. So uh, Euroleague is getting bigger and bigger every year. Yes. Joe, you played, um, you played in Spain for 10 years for three different clubs. Um, so you're a big expert of the Spanish basketball. Why we don't see Real and Barca in the Final Four, but Laboral this year? 
Well, you know, it, um, <clears throat> I think in Real Madrid's case, the last year, last season was an incredible season. They won, I think, five different championships between international championships, uh, <clears throat> European championship, and everything. It was it's an amazing year, and it's it's very difficult to maintain that that concentration and that, that, that work ethic after you've won so many things. And, and Barcelona just had a really tough time. They've been very inconsistent all year. But I think what the question you asked, I think, is, is the most important thing about this for EuroLeague. Seeing teams like Lokomotiv, Fenerbahce, in only their second year in the Final Four is so important for, for what the EuroLeague is all about. It's about parity. It's about every team has a chance to compete. It's not always like the the... the domestic leagues where in Spain it's Real Madrid Barcelona every year and what it does I compare it to like uh, Stefan Curry in the NBA yes you know you see Stefan Curry you see a guy that is like anybody else here in the stands and all he did was work hard and you see a team like Locomotive that worked hard a team like Fenerbahce that has worked hard they have some money they have to spend the money but they do have to work hard and and I think other teams see that there's a possibility now where in the domestic leagues you see like, well, it's always Madrid, Barcelona, they spend more money. In the EuroLeague, it's not like that. There's a lot of parity and there's a lot of ability for a lot of chances for teams to make it to the Final Four like this year. I think it's great for this competition. Yeah. Do you agree, Patrick? You better agree. No. <laughs> Joe is totally wrong. <laughs> no, I agree. I think uh, with uh, Kukstein and also with uh, Krasnodar, it was a development all season. I think they started decent and they got better every game, every week, um, beating top teams uh, week in and week out. And I think uh, that shows that the, that the league is growing, as, as Joe and Ibo already said, um, that the professionality also grows and uh, uh, that the coach is getting better. I mean, uh, also building a team and maintaining a team uh, full of superstars who, who get paid pretty well is not easy. I think the, the team aspect is so important and uh, most of the time, is uh, the best team is uh, is going going further when if the talent is equal. You played in Greece, you played in Germany, you played in Spain and Turkey. What do you think? In which of these countries basketball has developed the most over the last couple of years? I think in Turkey the development is very very big. Um, they have a different foreigner rule now. I talked to Ibo a couple of days ago about it, uh, and. Uh, uh, clubs are investing more money, they're building gyms, uh, the infrastructure is growing, so uh, they're making great progress uh, within the league and also in European competition. Um, Spain, as, as Joe already said, it's Barca and Madrid, the mo two big teams, sometimes Malaga, sometimes Valencia, but usually it's those, those two. Uh, and Real is not here, I think, also because of injuries this year. I mean, they had a lot of injuries, a lot of bad luck here and there, uh, and couldn't maintain a good rhythm. So um, the final four is in Berlin. So of course we would have seen Alba. We would love to have seen them. So what do you think? Um, when will it be that we see a German team in the final four? And which team could that be? Well, unfortunately, Alba is not here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope that within the next few years, uh, Alba might get a chance to, to go back to the EuroLeague and, and be a competitive team there. Um, I think Bamberg played great this season. Uh, they. I mean, barely missed the, missed the last eight and uh, beating a lot of top teams, uh, having a structure also, having a, having a coach and I've also financial background from, uh, from Brose as a main sponsor that, uh, that gives them opportunities to do stuff. I think Bayern Munich also is a, is a com competitor. Um, they're thinking of building or rebuilding their gym. They try to build uh, better, better uh, infrastructure also for, for junior programs to get young players involved in, the, in their programs, which is for us in Germany is essential because we're not going to have the same money as other countries but, uh, in, in the clubs. But uh, with talented young guys, um, also with good foreigners, uh, yeah. the combination will, will give us success in the, in the long run, I think. Yeah. Let's go back to the games yesterday, Ibrahim. Um, it was thrilling. It was exciting. Uh, what did we learn from these games looking to the games on Sunday? Uh, now, of course, Ceska and the uh, first game, Ceska played a little bit okay, more clever, but slow game, uh, not uh, high tempo, but they have uh, excellent point guards, Dekolo and Teodosic. Uh, on the other side, Fenerbahce, I believe, uh, I haven't seen that kind of game last two months, Fenerbahce. They play very bad first uh, two, three peri periods, quarters. 
Uh, after the overtime, they play much more uh, like they are. Yeah. Uh, but I believe tomorrow is not going to be the same because uh, for me, uh, semi-final is the most difficult than the final because uh, uh, Laboral is an athletic team and uh, it's not... Uh, they, they don't expect this. Mm -hmm. Le, against Jessica, I believe, very nice basketball, yeah. tough game, and both teams have the same chance. And uh, maybe Fenerbahce has a little bit of advantage from the uh, fans coming tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But for basketball, uh, I believe uh, the fans and who to see from the TV, mm -hmm. they enjoy it. You started your career uh, in 1993 uh, at Fenerbahce. Yes. And um, could you describe to the, to the people what basketball means in Turkey? Uh, like all over the Europe, football is the most popular sport yeah. in Turkey. But basketball is every day. Uh, but, I, but I saw the crowd yesterday. It must be, it must be something. <laughs> for sure, because if uh, Mercedes Arena capacity is 25,000 people, 25,000 people can come yeah. here. So uh, Fenerbahce fans to, wants to follow their team all over the uh, world. Uh, and uh, basketball is growing in Turkey. Six, seven teams, very competitive, and they're spending money. Mm. Uh, Turkish domestic league is also uh, very competitive. So it makes Fenerbahce more uh, attractive and uh, more responsibility. They, they feel more responsibility. Now they are the best team in Turkey, I believe. Yes. Uh, I hope they will win the final here. And it's going to be good for Turkish basketball too. Do you think to have such amazing fans behind you, could this give you the extra push tomorrow, maybe? Of course, of course. It's, it will be a good motivation for Fenerbahce. On the other hand, it makes a little bit pressure for the team, but uh, I believe they have, enough, they have enough career and enough, enough experience for that. Uh, tomorrow will be uh, full Fenerbahce gym on the house. Uh, I believe it helps. <laughs> Joe, um, now we have uh, the final that almost everyone expected. It's uh, Moscow against Fenerbahce. What's your take on the on the game tomorrow? Who will win, and what will the the crucial matchups? Yeah, I know who win. I'm I think I think uh, Ibrahim will know. Who if win. I know who win, I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be somewhere else in Hawaii <laughs> on vacation. Um, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a very interesting game because there's. It's almost two different styles of playing. Uh, Ceska wants to play a little bit more open, wants to score more points. Fenerbahce lately has, has raised the level of physicality in their game. They play very, very intense defensively. They play hard offensively also. Um, in my opinion, if, if Ceska isn't capable of matching the physicality of Fenerbahce and the way they played yesterday, especially in the beginning of the game, uh, Cheska's going to suffer a little bit in the beginning. Mm. And, and I don't know if they'll be able to pick up that rhythm. That's the way I look at things. You can say that Cheska played a little bit easier game yesterday because they looked like they were just kind of like... On, on, it, they put their car in neutral and just let it coast down yes. the hill and, and they won the game. But it doesn't, it's not, not ever as easy as it looks. But I think the victory, I think the difficulty of the victory by Fenerbahce and gives them more momentum going into the final game than it does for Ceska. And we know about Ceska's ghost. They have many ghosts there in the last mm. three, four years of losing to Olympiacos yeah. and twice and yeah. Maccabi one time. And I think that eventually gets in their head. It almost did yesterday. Mm. But Lokomotiv just wasn't able to, to step on them. Mm. And I think if that, if that happens against Fenerbahce, they're going to lose the game. What's your opinion on that, Patrick? Well, it's, it is two different styles. I mean... As Joe already said, uh, Ceska wants to play open. It's, it's a guard-oriented uh, game, and uh, with Fenerbahce with uh, with the three big guys there: Antic, uh, Udo, and uh, what's his name? What's it? No, and uh, Vesely. Uh, I mean, they're huge, big guys underneath. They're going to score inside, and I think that's that's also key for them to to score points, put put points on the on the board because uh, Ceska, like yesterday, they were switching every screen. They're going, uh, not giving any advantage to anybody. So if uh, Fenerbahce finds the, those advantages underneath the basket, um, I think they have a good chance. So all of three of you guess that Fenerbahce will make it? Yane. I, I, I say, yeah, I think Fenerbahce will win. Okay. Which means, which means 
Pascal will win for sure now. <laughs> <laughs> I would bet on this. <laughs> so. <laughs> you guess and you wish, yeah. So I said it at the beginning, you're all EuroLeague winners. Joe, you won the European League in 1995. What does it mean to win a EuroLeague title? I think, it, I think it's, I mean, you're, you're probably going to get three different answers right here. Yes. Um, you know, for me, as an American coming over to Europe and playing, you know, my first five or six years, I didn't even know what the European title was. <laughs> I, I didn't even know what it meant. Yeah. Um, I think I played three, four years in Spain before I knew what the Spanish title was. You yeah. know, it was like, you, just as an American, we don't understand it. And then when I signed in Madrid and, and there was actual aspirations and actual expectations mm -hmm. to win those titles, um, it's everything you play for. By the time you're done, it's done and said. You know, a lot of players make a lot of money. Um, they can live comfortably for the rest of their lives as they're smart. Um, You, be, you develop a lot of friendships. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as, as a small kid from upstate New York, I developed a, a, a whole new world mm -hmm. that opened up to me. But the one thing to me that stands out on everything is the titles that, I've, that I was able to win because it's accumulation of, of everything together. And when you get to that point, you get to that pinnacle of your career and, and, and you realize that the money doesn't matter, The, the no, nothing else matters. But it's nice to have. It, yeah, it's nice to have, but it doesn't <laughs> matter because it's not the same as like lifting up that, lifting up that cup and looking at the smiles and the rest of the team. One thing that was very special for me, I won the, the European title with Arvita Sabonis, who's one of the greatest players ever, but that was one title that he did not have. And just to see him, it was to me, I was looking at him going, that means maybe more than him than it does to me. And yeah. it was just amazing to see. So. It's just, you know, I was able to celebrate with my son. He was six years old, seven years old. I brought him down on the court, put him on my shoulders. It's the memories. Mm. And, and it's just an amazing feeling to, to win that title. Yeah. Patrick, you won the title with Barcelona in 2003. Can you tell us about your, your memories of this day, maybe? I don't have a whole lot of memories about the game, um, especially about the final game. I just remember when he first warmed up in that gym. Uh, Going out uh, from the tunnel into the gym, we just ho heard the people roaring and it was so loud already mm -hmm. inside the tunnel and you run out uh, on the court and uh, you couldn't hear a word. Yeah. It was just amazing. 16,000 people in Palau San Jordi in, in Barcelona. Uh, most of them, most of them uh, were rooting for us and uh, it was just amazing. And I, didn't, I didn't even have to warm up anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing I really remember vividly is uh, when we won it and uh, I think It was like still two seconds to, to play, but game was over. Everybody was running on the court, you know, hugging each other like little kids when they, I don't know, get free candy or something like this. <laughs> it was just an amazing experience. And uh, I, I agree with Joe. I think Tyler's what makes, makes this, you know, all this work and all this not glamorous road trip, six hours on the bus, two times a day in the gym, I don't know, video watching 100,000 hours of your life. Uh, it makes it worth in the end. And... Mm. It's something, you know, it doesn't make us better than anybody, but I think it's something very, very special and very uh, unique. Yeah. Ibrahim, you were uh, the top scorer in 2002 uh, when you won the EuroLeague title with Panathinaikos. Do you have any advice for the players for tomorrow? What could they do to just keep calm down? Uh, you know, final, uh, which is all players wants to be there. So, because they work all year, uh, a lot, like Patrick said, uh, practice every day, four hours, five hours, uh, stay away from your house, stay in the hotels, traveling. Mm. Uh, but in the end, all team, all 24 teams, wants to be at the final. And two teams now mm. playing final yes. tomorrow. Uh, as a player, uh, for me, the best thing in the tournament, uh, on the last day, To be, have to be on the court. Mm -hmm. So it's the most important thing. Yes. And final, everything can be in the final. And uh, as a players, you know, they have to, uh, tomorrow they have to relax. Very emotional game. Mm -hmm. uh, physically and mentally, they have to be strong. Because tomorrow's game is also mentally, you have to be strong. Mm -hmm. But both teams have, has many good players and quality players. Yes. We will see. Tomorrow, is, I think, will be... Nice game to watch, yeah. and I wish good luck for both teams. Joe, if you had to point out some key players tomorrow, whom would that be? 
Well, I think Patrick said it really well. The, 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 this, this game has become a guard-based game. And it's, it, you know, when we played, it was a big man's game, you know, and, and now it's kind of changed a little bit. Yeah. Um, um, but, but yesterday we saw in, in the Fenerbahce and Pan, um, uh, Laboral game that the big men helped the little men get into the game. You know, the, the play of Udo and Vesely in the middle and Borussis for Laboral was really important for both teams yes. to, to play. But, you know, it's, when you, we can talk about player and player and player. But it's such a team concept when you get to this the, to this point. You can't depend on one player anymore. Of course, you see, you see guards like like Bobby Dixon who can take over a game. Sometimes mm -hmm. you see guys like uh, you know guys like Teodosic and Decolo yesterday. They scored 30 points in the game. It's an amazing game for him. And everybody is a superstar. But you look for that one person to shine. To me, for Cheska, it was Fritzen yesterday. It was. Mm -hmm was a key player for that team. Yeah. If, you know, if he doesn't come in and put in those quality minutes that he put in, you know, they might not win that game. And, and it's just the little things. You know, I learned one thing from Selko Obradovic. It's the little things that win championships. And, and Ducolo might have scored 30 points, but I saw Fritzen dive on the ground three times and get loose balls and, and create more possessions for his team, which helps Ducolo get those 30 points. So it's the little things in these games, I think, that are the most important thing. Not the guy who's going to shine and score 30 or whatever. It's the little things. And I think the people who, the role players mm -hmm. in these games are usually the players that, that do things. And you don't see statistically. You know, you can't read it the next day. Yeah. But they've done it. Okay? Is there, is there any player that you can compare yourself to at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> or you would compare yourself to? I'll leave that one to you. Yeah, I think I'm kind of like... Vesely with my jumping ability. <laughs> but no one, no one has the socks like you. <laughs> no, I think the game got so, more, so much more athletic and so much more physical. Yes. And uh, <laughs> no, I, maybe, why, why maybe, Bor maybe Borussis, but uh, even him is probably more athletic than me. <laughs> you asked me why I'm laughing. Yeah. I, la I laugh because cause one time I did, everybody asked that question, and one time I said it's, I said accidentally I'm uncomparable to anybody, <laughs> which always makes me laugh. But it's true. It's because uh, the game has changed so yes. much. Even the big guys can shoot now. Yeah, the yeah. big guys shoot more from the outside. Uh, you know, guys in my position now are more effective from outside the three-point line than when we were around the basket. So it's really difficult yeah. to compare ourselves, I think, you know, the, especially the big guys nowadays, to any players or, have, or say, hey, that guy plays like me or this guy plays like me in my day because... Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, I sit there sometimes with the headphones and I commentate on games and I think to myself, man, I, I'm, thank God I'm not out there anymore. Yeah. Thank <laughs> God I don't have to go out there with these guys because they're bigger, they're stronger, they jump more. They're not as smart. All right? We were much smarter. They're not as smart. I'm going to say that. But everything else they got. Yeah. And, so, I, and I'm jealous. <laughs> so all three of you are, are TV commentators after your active career. So do you have any advice for the coaches maybe tomorrow? Because you now have a different point of view as a player. Whoever, whoever wants to answer this question. <laughs> I have to, huh? <laughs> I don't know if he takes it, but uh, <laughs> as I said before, I think the inside game and, and taking advantage of a physical and athletic uh, um, uh, advantage they have inside is, is probably a key. Like last, last, last night at the game against, uh, against Laboral, they couldn't score from the outside. They were, t they were taking shots and they were open shots, but they weren't making them. And then all of a sudden they start going inside, they start getting, uh, getting buckets uh, close to the rim, and uh, that helped them a lot and gave them, uh, gave them a d whole different rhythm in the game. Yeah. So, thank you very much. I'm done with my questions. So now the audience has the chance to ask questions. Are there any questions? Yeah. In the front. Last time I saw Ibo was in 2006 in Tokyo, in World Championships. Man, how do you do that? You are the Dorian Gray of world basketball. How do you do that? How come you don't age? I mean, I mean what are you doing? <laughs> I, I, let him, I let him answer. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> uh, it's a secret. <laughs> I cannot say. <laughs> no, I, uh, first of all, I, after I stopped, I stopped playing basketball, I never stopped working out. I work out every day like I was a player. 
uh, and uh, nothing special, you know. Maybe it's uh, genetic, I don't know. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> that must be that's it, yeah, right. that yeah, must yeah. be it. And really, thank you for uh, friends here. Uh, to be, uh, to play in Greece, for me, is the biggest honor because I have a very, very good memories and very good uh, things, uh, special moments in Greece. And first of all, I have to say uh, thank you for the Greek people mm -hmm. because uh, I feel a very big responsibility when I was going there. Yeah. And I live there five years and I feel Athens like my hometown and Greece is my second hometown. Right. <laughs> same, same. Panathinaikos is always in, uh, in my heart.